This is Think Smart with TMFG, your weekly podcast of what's newsworthy and relevant to everyday Canadians. With your host, Senior Financial Advisor Rob McClelland and Mike Conan of Asante Capital Management. Today on Think Smart with TMFG, Mike and I are going to be discussing how little time you may have for your retirement. Mike, this was a study done by our friends, again, the Visual Capitalist. It's looking at U.S. data, but it's not dissimilar from Canadian data. And they were looking at sort of life expectancy. And so I reverse engineered it a little bit and said, you know, what if someone retired at the age of 60? We call those the go-go years, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But how long are you probably going to spend in your retirement? Now, there's some that may get 30 years, but on average, you're only going to have a 20-year retirement if you're a man. Well, it used to be only three, didn't it, in the past? I remember (laughs) at one time you're retired at 67 or something like that, and most people's life expectancy was 69. That's why... When CPP was originally designed, it was designed to take care of sort of a three to four year life expectancy and things have changed around quite a bit, haven't they? Well, the data says men will make it for 20 and a half years on average. Women, a little longer, 23 and a half years. There's a gap of three years. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And we've always talked to clients about if you do retire at 60, you're in good health typically. You've got the resources. If you've been, we've been your advisor, you've got the resources to have a, a good retirement. Time to get going, time to be active and do those things because you're, you're going to go in short order into that next period. What about if someone retires at age 65? How long do they have? In those really go go years, probably 65 to, I mean, 70 is where you can do everything basically the same as you would beforehand. You, generally speaking, people are in pretty good health. Once you get into your 70s, things, you can still do a lot, but they may change. Your energy level may change. So let's look at that life expectancy again, just to figure out how long that retirement journey may be. If you retire at age 65, men are expected to live another 17 years. That brings them to 82. Women, a little bit longer, 19.7 years. But it's less than 20 years and time does fly. The gap again with men and women has now shrunk a little bit to 2.7 years. If you want to delay that retirement even another five years to age 70, you're going to get a pretty short retirement ahead of you. 13.6 years for men, 15.8 for women, a gap of only 2.2 years. That's a pretty short retirement. If you had visions of, you know, 20, 25 years in retirement, You may be one of the lucky ones or maybe one of the unlucky ones. We've had lots of clients that have retired and are no longer alive within two years. And out of those 15 years, how many are going to be fully healthy? That makes a big difference. And again, you're not only thinking of the health of one spouse, you're thinking of the health of two spouses. And if something happens to your spouse, we've seen this happen many times, neither one is traveling. Makes a big difference. Let's talk about, we have had a few clients, not many probably 5% who go all the way to age 75. They're typically business owners. They stay involved in the business. On average, they'll make it 10 and a half years. So they've, they've worked a long time and retired for an extremely short time. Women, a little better at 12.3 years. That gap keeps shrinking. And, and interesting enough, I did a little bit of research on this. When men or women are born, women are expected to live six years longer. But by the time they get to age 75, the gap is less than two years. And the expectation is that gap is going to continue to shrink and shrink and shrink. If you're going to want to have a longer retirement, what are some of the things you could do to make sure your retirement is enjoyable, healthy, and longer? Well, staying physically active is a big piece of it. You have to engage in regular exercise to maintain your strength, the flexibility, your cardiovascular energy. So you need to go and make sure you're an active retiree. You can't just go home. Worst retirement plans when people just say, well, I'm done work. I'm just going to go sit and watch, watch what's on Netflix. It doesn't work very well. I think as you get older and, you know, I'm now 62, you start realizing you can't cheat the system anymore. 
So you, you before, when you were younger, you felt you could cheat the system a little bit. Time was on your side. Time isn't on your side anymore. You can't cheat that system. You need to maintain a healthy diet. Eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, all of those things that we read all about. When you're in your 60s and 70s, those become even more important to ensure longevity. So when does time go from being your friend to your enemy? Well, I There's got to be one age when I remember when time was your friend. I always tell my kids, time's your friend. You can relax. You got time to make this work. And all of a sudden, it's you versus time versus time helping you. I think it's in your mid-20s. Yeah. And, and after that, you start losing your ability to recover. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a long time ago for most of us. A couple of other things that are important, stay socially connected. You know, connections with friends, family members, and community are, are key for those clients who have had a successful retirement. We see that all day long. Getting regular checkups, having a, you know, you can, some people delay going to see their doctor. You need to figure out what's going on with your health. You're, you're not, you, a lot of people can't read their body and they wait too long and then they get a dire diagnosis about what their actually health is. So getting regular checkups, and that probably means at least once a year, you're going in and getting a full physical done. And finally, manage stress. So those are, I think, things that we read about. We all know there's lots of research on all of that. Those are things that are going to help you prolong your life. And stress is an interesting one because that doesn't mean do nothing. Some people are more stressed by sitting home doing nothing than they are. We talk about those people that work to their 75. The business owner that worked to 75, many of them I find are not stressed at all by business when they're at that age. It's their, it's their relaxing point when they're doing business. They're stressed if they have nothing to do. So people have different things that stress them out along the way too. What are some of the things recently retired individuals could do to get the most out of that sort of first 10 years of retirement? Hobbies and interests, it, you can pick up lots of things. You know, I've been a musician all my life, but I have a lot of retirees who started to take up violin, flute, piano, and they actually have the time to put toward learning this hobby that they've never had the time to put to it when they had to work nine to five. So there's great hobbies. That's, you know, my, my area. Other people have different hobbies that they like. Golf is a fantastic one. It's not that it, it's taxing hard. Taxing on the body? Taxing on the, you know, I went out at 50 and started trying to play soccer again. I tell you, it's a bad idea. It, it took my legs down about tenfold more than they used to be. You got to do hobbies that are going to fit your abilities. So if you, if you're good and you can play still basketball, pick up games, pickleball, you know, is a big thing that people do when they're retired. It's, you know, tennis, it's a little bit of a light tennis and it's huge in the retirement communities. It's an opportunity to certainly to travel and explore. You may have a bucket list of places that you want to go. I certainly do. We've, you know, Ingrid and I have started doing that. You've always be been better at the hobby side than I have. Although, you know, I put golf down as one of my hobbies. Anything that's going to keep you physically active. There's a commercial on these days about the, the, the wife is very worried because her, her husband has become a mall walker. Yeah. And, and it's so true. The, you need to be active. You need to get out. Even in the winter, you've got to figure out. Maybe, maybe you need to be walking in malls to get those steps in, whether it's 10,000 or 5,000. You need to be getting steps in on a regular basis. It's just movement, isn't it? It's physical movement and not just sitting there. And once you're doing that, it, that activity always works for every hobby I see people have that has movement involved in it. They end up doing very well. Volunteering. Often you've been in a career where you've learned a lot. You've got skills that the world needs. Just because you're not on someone's payroll anymore or running your own business, there's no reason you can't take some of those skills and apply them to umpteen businesses that need your help. A lot of organizations, charities need someone to organize. It's interesting. My wife, she works for Make-A-Wish and she helps to grant wishes for children, but they're undergoing some stuff in the office. And uh, one of the ladies said, can you come in and help us for a, an hour and a half? And Ingrid said, oh, I'd love to. So she goes in and Ingrid's an extremely efficient worker. And at the end of the day, the woman said, uh, any chance you could come back tomorrow? And yeah. sure enough, Ingrid's been there now for a week helping out because she's just really good at that. So there's someone with a skill set that a lot of people didn't have. Yeah, She has it, she can use it, and she's getting enjoyment out of it. 
it's great. We've had clients with the Habitat for Humanity before that have volunteered to do that. People in the, with construction in their past have gone and, and done great jobs to help those organizations along. We've got to go back to financial planning. Financial planning is the key. If you've got the confidence that you've got a good financial plan in place, that your investment's in the right place, that you're earning enough income to support your lifestyle, that stress goes away. And we've had a lot of clients tell us they're really enjoying what they're doing because they don't worry about what we're doing on our end. It's a big mindset. We have something called client advisory board. And remember, there was a few years ago, we asked people about a retirement. We just have this group of eight of our clients and they switch every two years, but we go and ask them for advice on how we're doing business. And we asked them about retirement and how they really felt. And it was amazing how uncomfortable people were with the idea of retiring at first. And we actually had some people that have been retired for many years, coaching the people that were newly retired or about to retire into how to enjoy retirement. It's an extraordinarily extraordinary amount of stress that's related to spending someone else's money, which is money you earn. And when, when I earn money, someone pays me, that's someone else's money I'm spending. When you're retired and you're not making money anymore, you're now spending your money. Now, spending your money is a very different psychological entity than spending someone else's money. And people have a very difficult time dealing with that transformation. And that's our job, to show them that they can and that they should. That brings us to the end of another week. Thank you for joining us. This is Rob and Mike with Think Smart from the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management, reminding you to subscribe so that you can have the best retirement ever. been listening to the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management Limited. Asante Capital Management Limited is a member of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund and the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. Insurance products and services are provided through Asante Estate and Insurance Services Incorporated. This material is provided for general information and is subject to change without notice. Every effort has been made to compile this material from reliable sources. However, no warranty can be made as to its accuracy or completeness. Before acting on any of the previous information, please make sure to see a professional advisor for individual financial advice based on your personal circumstances. The opinions expressed are those of the authors and not necessarily those of Asante Capital Management Limited.